Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the chase challenge from the intro to blue team track from Hack the Box. So this track is going to be mostly forensics, mostly going to look at what if you are a part of a blue team or an incident response team um, and seeing what they have to do and what, are the, what the skills would be that you need. Um, so the first challenge is chase. Uh, in this challenge uh, one of our web servers servers triggered an AV alert, so an antivirus alert, but none of the sysadmins say they were logged onto it. Um, we've taken a network capture before shutting the server down to take a clone of the disk. Can you take a look at the PCAP and see if anything is up? So we are a sysadmin or we are, uh, are responsible for figuring out what happened um, and what happened on the web server. So we have a network, a PCAP file, which is a, a, a network capture of, of the environment of what happened before the AV alert was triggered. So let's take a look at that. So yeah, we have this file, chase.pcapng, and we see it's a uh, pcapng capture file. So this is a network capture that we can open in Wireshark. So if we open that in Wireshark, we'll see that we have quite a few uh, Messages here, not that many, but let's see what happened here. So the first thing I like to do when looking at network captures is just taking a global overlook of what is happening here. So first of all, we see, okay, we do a TCP handshake, and then we have this get of a slash, slash page, we have this get of welcome.png, okay, scrolling down, we have a get of upload.aspx, so ASPX means we're probably running ASP.net in, in the back end here, so this is likely a Windows server. Um, okay, so then we do a post to upload.aspx, we're uploading a file, uh, we're then getting cmd.aspx, so maybe we've uploaded uh, a, a, a web shell here, um, and now we're going to use that web shell. So we have a post to cmd.aspx, so we're likely using it now. We're then getting netcat64, so through this web shell maybe we have uploaded netcat64. And we can then use, so this is all from netcat, uh, we can then use netcat, or the attacker has used netcat to get a reverse shell or something of that sort. Uh, and then here we see another post to there, and all of a sudden we see that the server connects to the victim, because in all of these HTTP requests we see that 7 uh, connected to 5, so 5 is our our uh, web server here, and then the attacker is 7. But all of a sudden, after this post request, the web server connected to the attacker to port 4444, which is, I mean, a common port, because it's an easy port to, to get a, a reverse shell onto back. And then we see a lot of requests to there. So what do we know right now? Let's, let's map out what we know currently. So we have our web server, and the attacker uh, posted to upload.asp, and we think that they um, they posted command.aspx, which would be a web shell. Then from there they uploaded netcat. So we have um, netcat on the machine. If I can scroll down, yep, we have netcat on the machine. And then using our our uh, web shell again, they used netcat to get a reverse shell. And now what is going to happen in that reverse shell? Well, we do not know yet. So it's a question mark. And then, what is the ending here? So after all this, the, all of these commands in our reverse shell, or the, all these packets, um, we see that we get this file jbkee.txt, and that, and we get it once more, and that is the the end of this capture. So okay, back to the drawing board here. So we have a lot of commands that are being executed, and now we have this txt file. So that's pretty much the flow of what we currently think happened. And this is a quite an educated guess if you, guess if you ask me, because th this is kind of the flow of what happened. But now we can start digging in deeper, start looking into the requests. And Wireshark actually makes that really easy for us. So if we go back to the top here somewhere and we say, OK, on this HTTP request, I want to follow the TCP stream. This is going to give us this window. And if I zoom in a bit. In this window we can see what happened. So um, first of all we had this get of, this, of the main page. Okay, that's not useful. Welcome to PNG, also not useful. Then we have this get of upload.aspx. So, okay. 
we respond with uh, this page, which is a form which has a auth key and a file to be uploaded. Okay, so what is our attacker going to do? It's going to post to this page with the operation upload. So it's going to upload a file. Uh, it supplies the auth key, which in this case is admin. So that's already a big red flag for us because we know, well, our auth key was just terrible. So uh, this could easily be guessed so any attacker could have access to this. So, so that's probably what should be changed in the future. Change this auth key to something more uh, secure and make sure that it doesn't get leaked to prevent this attack from happening. Uh, because the attacker then uploaded cmd.aspx. And what is this? This is a Visual Basic script that's going to run at the server. It has a sub uh, routine here, uh, or a sub uh, that's going to start a new process uh, with our command text. So I suppose that's like a text field somewhere. And it's then going to output that on the page. So yeah, this is a very simple uh, web shell. It's going to run uh, a command and then output that to the screen. So at the bottom, we see here that we have this button, which is going to um, run this sub here when pressed. And we see that we have this text box XCMD where our text is going to be. And then this X path, which is going to contain uh, CMD.exe. So we're running CMD.exe with the argument uh, supplied in this text box. Okay, great. So that, that's kind of what we uploaded. So we know there is currently a web shell available on the web server. So what is the next thing that the attacker is going to do? Well, are, they are going to run that web shell and start executing commands. So, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, we get the shell. See, okay, this is the result here. And then we do a post to this web shell that we just uploaded, or the attacker is going to do that rather. Um, and the post request is going to contain uh, the X path of Windows system cmd.exe. And the command is going to be search util uh, URL cache split with the file from this web server, which is from this IP address, which is the attacker itself. And it's going to uh, get netcat64.exe. So using search util, the attacker uploads netcat64.exe to the server to the location users public netcat.exe. Okay, so that, that's what the attacker does, uploading netcat.exe. We then move on to the next request because then we are the attacker is making another post request to this web shell. And this time it's going to be running user public netcat.exe to connect to its own IP address to the port 4444 that we saw earlier with the dash E and, and dash E is going to say run this upon uh, connecting and it's going to run cmd.exe upon connecting thus giving uh, us a web shell, uh, a actual shell, a reverse shell uh, on the box or the attacker. It's giving the attacker that shell. Okay, cool. So that verified what we thought. We were correct. Uh, we upload that get.64. Uh, uh, exe and we get a shell through that. So where are these packets from that uh, from that shell? So we can see what happens there. So that's here because we see port 44444 is connecting. So if we go there and we follow the TCP, TCP stream once more, we can see, okay, this is everything that happened in the shell. So we see we have a who am I uh, IP config. All right, all right, nothing too suspicious there. But then we have this PowerShell invoke web request to upload this. Wait, let me zoom in here. To upload this file with a very strange name uh, into users public file.txt. We see that fails because invoke web request isn't a name of a commandlet in this case. So each he uploads it again with cert util. So okay, he uploaded the file. And that is kind of the end of that. Uh, the file is then on the web server because in the last requests, we can see that this file has been gotten from the web server. So let's see what this file contains by following this last stream. And we see the file just contains hey there, uh, but the name is kind of suspicious. And since we've looked through all of the packets here, we can kind of say, okay, this name, maybe that's something because we see it only contains uppercase letters and numbers between two and six. Uh, 
So this could be, for example, base uh, 32, because base 32 only contains uppercase letters and numbers between 2 and 7, I believe. Uh, so that this that might be it. So we copy this text. Let's see if we can find anything out, anything interesting about that to find the flag. Because the flag at this point really is just like a, a constellation, uh, like a price, really, because we've already figured out the whole flow of what happened on this server. So, okay, we paste in the name of the file here. And then we can do, uh, we can try what we thought here, base32. And if we do that, we see, yeah, that is a flag. Now, if you didn't know base32 was really a thing, on Cyberchef here, we have magic, and magic is really going to just try various operations to see uh, which ones might give a result. And we see that uh, through magic here, we also get base32 uh, giving us the flag. So that's the flag, but really the most important thing was kind of reversing the whole flow of what happened here. Uh, so kind of this flow, understanding how it happened, understanding. Uh, and I think from an attacker point of view, if you've uh, done a couple of boxes, you will really easily be able to, like this is something that you would do as well, right? Um, and this obviously triggered uh, the antivirus in this case, and that's why uh, the admins or the sysadmins found out that something weird was going on. So that's kind of an introduction to blue teaming, a very easy uh, introduction to Wireshark, to like how network captures work and, and how you can analyze them. So it's also a very simple challenge. Uh, the difficulty will ramp up a little bit in the next challenges, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you back for the remainder of this series. Uh, so see you later. Goodbye.